Hey friend, and welcome to the study on how evolution is simply a flawed theory. Now, atheists, they quite obviously derive substantial ammunition for their anti-God views from the theory of evolution. And this is what I'm going to aim to debunk here today. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it. And hey, if you think I'm out to lunch, I don't know what I'm talking about. Or hey, if you want to add something to this video that perhaps I've missed, write some comments down below. So in view of this fact that they derive lots of ammunition from their theory of, theory, theory of evolution, let's now examine key atheist objections to the Christian view of the Creator God. And uh, those who desire a more comprehensive study of this can read a book called The Ten Things You Should Know About the Creation versus Evolution Debate. It's, um, it's published by Harvest House Publishers. So let's take a look at one of the objections. An objection is that evolution must be true because it has been observed firsthand by scientists. Atheist and evolutionary theorist Stephen Jay Gould wrote an article called Evolution as Fact and Theory. And in his article on fact and theory, he writes uh, a few things. And um, basically, in, a, in that article, he states that scientists now have observational evidence of evolution in action. Now, how do we answer this objection as Christians? Well, the examples that Gould cites are actually examples of microevolution in action, not macroevolution. Microevolution refers to change that occur within the same species, while macroevolution refers to the transition or evolution of one species into another. Macroevolution consists of changes within a population leading to a completely new species with genetic information that did not exist in any of the parents. There's no question even among creationists that microevolution has taken place, for all the different races of human beings have descended from a single common ancestor, human ancestor, which is Adam, uh, Adam and Eve. Likewise, all kinds of dogs have microevolved from the original dog species created by God. In no case, however, has macroevolution ever been observed by scientists. This is in keeping with the fact that the genetic pool of DNA in each species sets parameters beyond which the species simply cannot evolve. That is, dogs can't take on new characteristics, but they cannot evolve into cats, for dog DNA always remains dog DNA, just as cat DNA always remains cat DNA. Scripture indicates that God created the initial kinds of animals and then reproduction took place generation by generation according to its kind, which is what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verses 21 and 24. This type of evolution is called micro, micro evolution in the sense that small changes have taken place in various species. So for example, human DNA makes it possible for humans to have different eye colors, different hair colors, different heights, dark skin, light skin, bulky frame, scrawny frame, and so forth. All different kinds of micro evolutions or micro changes. The possibility for all kinds of variations such as these is encoded into the DNA of the human species. While microevolution is an observed fact, evolutionists have in the past tended to speak of evolution as a single unitary process, merging micro and uh, macroevolution into one basic category, such that basically these, these unitary process, uh, such that proof for microevolution is viewed as proof for macroevolution. Um, so this conclusion is unwarranted. The idea that you have this one, this evolution, and it's all classed in together with micro and macro. Um, so the objection here. Another objection I want to address is mutations. Mutations working in conjunction with natural selection explain how evolution works. As one atheist put it, given enough time and changing environmental conditions, mutations will add to mutation and any species will gradually change into one or more new species. Now, a mutation involves a change of DNA sequence such, uh, such that a new character or trait emerges in the organism. So such mutations are directly related to natural selection, a process involving survival of the fittest. Members of a species with superior traits survive while members with inferior traits die out. By this ongoing process, inferior traits are eventually bred out of the species. And so the superior winners not only pass on their, so their superior traits to offspring, but also allegedly develop ever new characteristics that enhance the possibility of survival. So 
so as this process repeats itself, generation by generation, the organism grows increasingly complex and often evolves into entirely different species with novel features. And so that, that's the idea there about mutations and evolution, okay? Now, how do we as Christians answer? How do we answer this objection that I brought up now? Well, natural selection does occur in the world, but it always involves limited changes within species. So that is, there are microevolutionary mutations, but not macroevolutionary mutations. John Morris, he explains this, and this is, a, I'm quoting from him now. He says, variation within a specific created type occurs all the time. Natural selection can select the variant best suited for an environment, but natural selection does not create anything new. Genetic mutations, that, that's the end of the quote actually, so that's it. So now I'm going to get into my explanation here. So genetic mutations, based on what I've read, can account for minor changes such as blue eyes rather than brown, or tall characteristic, uh, or, 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 or short, so you can have blue eyes or brown, tall or short, but mutations can never account for the emergence of a characteristic not already contained in the gene pool of that species or kind, yet what is contained in the gene pool of each kind. So just think about it. Yet what is contained in the gene pool of each kind. That's Genesis 1, 24, 25. So that which is contained in the gene pool of each kind is vast. It's very vast. So there's a lot of variety, and these are micro changes that can happen amongst the species. It doesn't mean that evolution is true. Even in terms of human beings alone, there's so much gene genetic variety built into human DNA that the average human couple could have, you know, over 10,000, or we could say over 100,000 children before they would have one child identical to another. That number one followed by many zeros, 100, over 100,000, is greater than the number of sand grains by the sea, the number of stars in the sky, so to speak. The point is, then, that the gene pool of each species allows for plenty of variation within the species. So variation happens, it's allowed. It's not an, ev it's not an evidence of evolution. There are limits to change. So the DNA in each member of the species will ensure that each member of the species will remain a member of that species and not develop into a new species. There has not been nor can ever be any crossing over of the kinds that, that have been outlined in Genesis 1, for example, the kinds, the types. And um, there's experiments done by uh, Mendel. Mendel's experiments in plant genetics proved that the range of variation possible within a species was narrowly limited to the genetic parameters of that species and offered no possibility to develop into a different species. So we never see one species developing into entirely different. And that, that just knocks and blows out the theory of evolution completely. Evolution is essentially flawed. Um, there are other things that I can get into, other points, but I just want to go through these objections. And hey, you think I'm out to lunch? Share with me anything that you have on the comments below. But let me tell you, friends, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe this world has been tainted with sin, and I believe people and animals have changed in response to the sin problem. Um, so there's a lot of things I could go through. Man, I, I won't make this video any longer than it has to. And so I hope this is giving you some food for thought. Hey, go in the comment section below. Let me know. If you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe. Let me know if you like this content and help me develop some more. God bless you and keep you until we study again. Thank you.